If you're watching this video, you've probably seen my previous video about the best resin 3D printing tool that you've never heard of, which was a peristaltic pump. As is often the case, the YouTube comment section gave a better idea than what I had presented in the video, and that is these syringes. This is actually my first time using these. It's like a thousand times bigger than the ones I've ever seen in my life. So in theory, this should work better than the peristaltic pump and have all the pros without the cons. So let's do a live demo real quick. As you can tell, it's not exactly perfect. This is a 300 milliliter syringe and I'm not able to get enough suction to really get all of it as easily as I could with the pump. But I am able to get some and little by little I could transfer it and it could be very similar. Let's try a smaller pump. All right, we're back in the workshop now. I tried four other syringes, a 150 milliliter, 25 millimeter and two 15 milliliters. This one came with baby cold medicine. But of all of these, the 150 milliliter syringe was by far the best. And while not as good, this uh, 25 milliliter was noticeably better than the 15s. Now I could see both of these actually being used like we imagined they would because of how well they ended up working. The suction was perfect. They filled up much better than the 300. And using my thumb like this and a good grip, I was able to push it out with one hand and then I could use the plastic spatula to push the resin into a single area so that I could then suck up resin as I went along. We couldn't do that with the 300 because that means that you can actually leave the vat in and you can use it without needing to tilt the vat like I showed in previous videos. And with that method of using both hands, you can empty out the vat in one, two minutes as opposed to the five or seven minutes it takes with the peristaltic pump. And that was our main goal, to have the benefits of the pump without the time and with the ease of use and with the same cleanliness. And this did it. It wasn't perfect though. And I wanna stress that before I started to try these other syringes, I took a look at our FEP sheet and I noticed that there's some scratches on it. And they were definitely the scratches from the 300 milliliter syringe from this one, which of course, is no bueno. And from this point on, I made sure to suction up the corners right here and the very ends of it. So I would push the resin towards the edges and towards the ends where all the resin can kind of collect. And that made it a little bit easier while preventing the scratching that was happening in the middle of the FEP. I also want to point out that I took a bit of strength to do this with one hand. Uh, I'm by no means the strongest person in the world, but it's still worth bringing up, I think. And for those wondering, when I was using the plastic spatula, I made sure that I wasn't touching the FEP because I didn't want to scratch it there as well. Now, in terms of resin spillage and this being spill proof or spill free, I was able to do mostly about 75% of this tank within less than a minute with one wipes worth of resin. Like one wipes worth of resin got on the mat using this syringe. That's a good amount for me. Very good. I accept it. <laughs> Overall, I was really impressed with the 150 syringe. It's absolutely a new tool in my resin corner and it was three for $10, which for me is very affordable and way cheaper than the peristaltic pump. So what about the pump? I'm not sure. I could still see one being used because I was worried about the scratches or if I have such a big vat that I don't want to deal with the manual labor. I can't see myself using this for smaller vats, to be honest, but you know, time will tell that's to be determined still. So let's do a quick recap then. Some tips for usage. Okay, we're gonna avoid contact with the FEP. We're gonna suction in the corners and we're gonna use the spatula to guide the resin into the corner for that maximum suctioning. This 300 milliliter syringe works well for the larger resin printers since there's gonna be a lot more resin to work with and suck up. And that means way less spills when you're lifting it and transferring it to a table. This 150 milliliter syringe works well for any size printer. It's ideal for medium and smaller size ones. This was the universal pocket knife of this batch. It's the one that I'd recommend getting if this is something that interests you as well. And then the 25 and 15 milliliters, they work, but they're not ideal. They're slower and most likely you'll have one around the house. So if you wanna try before you buy, see if this is something you could 
see yourself doing incorporating in your workflow, then this is a great option to get started. Now the price and accessibility of these. Basically, you can get one at any local pharmacy. This is part of what makes this uh, a really great accessory, in my opinion, and a really great tool. It's pretty rare that you find something like this that's available worldwide that's affordable and has the potential to significantly impact a resin workflow, which is notorious for being dirty, sticky, resin everywhere, as it has been for me in the past. And this, for me, has been pretty much spill-free. It was a really cool tip. And I need to thank everybody who commented and shared that they use syringes in their own workflow because then I can pass it on to the community through my channel. Now, if you haven't noticed yet, we have new merch. I'm wearing one of our new shirts, so go check it out in the link below if you do like this. Uh, help us out and like this video, share it with one of your friends who needs a little bit less resin mess in their life. And if you want to support the channel, the best way to do so is to become one of our patrons on Patreon and to visit lostadventures.co, pick up a late pledge or some of our sweet 3D models. See you again next time. Once again, happy printing and happy gaming.